Hi folks, if you have children or are around them, you know they tend to get sick a lot due to their lower immunity. This can happen suddenly. They can be running around happily one minute and then seem ill the next. Most of the time their aches and coughs pass quickly. But what about the times when these illnesses stick around and start affecting the child? Those are the times when you need to identify the symptoms and take your child to the doctor. In today's video, we'll tell you what these symptoms are so that you can identify them in time and prevent their health condition from getting worse. These can be anything from high fever to breathing problems. Stay tuned to find out more. Number 1. Headache Headaches can be quite common in children. They can get reoccurrent headaches as a reaction to stress or worry due to the pressure for better grades or family arguments. But sometimes they may get acute reoccurrent headaches which can point towards meningitis, a bacterial infection of the membrane that covers the spinal cord and brain. The main symptoms are stiff neck, headache, confusion, and fever. Younger children are likely to be more lethargic or so irritable that they can't be consoled. If not treated early, children can suffer brain damage. If your child has been vomiting constantly, has blurred vision or is seeing double, or is very sick, call a doctor immediately. If they're hard to wake up or passed out, acts or talks confused, has weakness in the arms or legs or on one side of the body, then call emergency services immediately. Number 2. Sore Throat Most sore throats in children are part of a cold. In fact, a sore throat may be the only symptom for the first 24 hours. Then a cough or runny nose occurs. Although harmless in most cases, constant sore throat if accompanied by severe trouble swallowing, fever, and one-sided throat pain can indicate a more serious problem like an abscess of the tonsils. It's a bacterial infection of the tonsils that can be spread to the surrounding tissues. Your child may also have problems fully opening their mouth. If your child has been having severe sore throat, drooling, spitting, and fever, they may have a serious condition called epiglottitis. It's a bacterial infection of the flap of tissue above the vocal cords which covers the windpipe during swallowing. It can shut off the airway as well. Seek medical attention if your child has sore throat pain which is severe and is not better two hours after taking ibuprofen, has large lymph nodes in the neck, has a fever that lasts more than three days, and an earache or ear drainage. Number 3. High Fever A temperature of more than 99.5 Fahrenheit is a fever, but the doctors stress that the number on the thermometer isn't as important as how the children seem themselves. If they're playing and eating normally, there's probably no need to worry. But if they seem irritable or unusually drowsy, it's cause for concern. The exception is babies under 3 months with a high temperature who should see a doctor. Most fevers in kids are caused by colds or other viral infections and can be treated at home using children's paracetamol. Watch for an unexpected second rise in temperature a few days into a cold or virus. This can indicate a secondary ear or throat infection which may require antibiotics. Number 4. Breathing Problems If your child is wheezing or experiencing fast or labored breathing, they may need immediate medical attention. Respiratory problems is the number one reason that kids frequently miss school in the USA. The cause may be asthma or a viral infection such as pneumonia, which is why breathing difficulties often follow cold symptoms such as fever, runny nose, cough, or sore throat. Respiratory distress or an increase in effort of breathing means that your child isn't getting enough oxygen and must seek immediate medical attention. Other signs are bluish color around their mouth, lips, or fingernails, pale or gray-looking skin tone, nostrils flaring excessively, skin sucking in between, above, or below the rib cage. Number 5. Severe Allergic Reactions Allergies in children are quite common, with about 40% of children having some kind of allergy in the USA. Food allergies can prove fatal. Those most likely to cause allergies in kids are eggs, fish, nuts, particularly peanuts, soy, seafood, and milk. Other potentially serious allergens include bee stings and some medications as well. Potential signs of life-threatening allergic reactions that require an immediate trip to the emergency ward include wheezing or difficulty breathing, stinging nettle-like rash, and swelling of the lips, throat, or tongue. Number 6. Cuts and Scrapes Skin, knees, and boo-boos are just part of the territory when it comes to little kids. There's no need to panic when yours gets one, and most will heal in time. Your first priority is always to control the bleeding and keep the cut clean. If you can't control the bleeding after 30 minutes or if the cut is gaping, see a physician right away. 
Not only might your child need stitches, but it's also important that the physician clean the wound thoroughly to prevent an infection. Also notify your doctor quickly if at any point you notice redness or swelling around the wound, inflammation or discharge, or your child is in excessive pain, lethargic or feverish. Not only do you want to make sure that there isn't an infection, but it's crucial to rule out sepsis, which is a very serious medical condition in which bacteria gets into the bloodstream and the body attacks its own organs and tissues as an immune response. A cut shouldn't affect the general well-being of a child, but sepsis will make a child look very sick. So if your child has a cut and then suddenly is feverish or has a change in their level of alertness, alert your doctor or seek emergency care immediately. A quick diagnosis of sepsis, which can be treated with antibiotics and intensive care, can be life-saving. Number 7. Vomiting Sorry, but if you have a young child, you're going to have to deal with throwing up at some point. It's gross, but it's part of the territory of being a parent. In most cases, vomiting is caused by gastroenteritis, also known as the stomach flu, which is benign and simply has to run its course. What's most important in these cases is that you watch your child. When a child can't hold down even small quantities of fluid, dehydration is a serious risk. Signs of dehydration include decreased urine output, sunken eyes, extreme sleepiness, parched lips, or if your baby's crying but not producing tears. If you think your child might be dehydrated, or if your child is throwing up repeatedly and is six months or younger, call your doctor right away. Extreme dehydration can be very serious, but it's fixable. You might have to take a trip to the hospital so that your little one can receive fluids through an IV. If your child is throwing up blood, call your doctor immediately to rule out serious illness. If their vomit contains bile, which is a bright greenish yellow substance or has blood that looks like coffee grounds, get to an emergency room right away to make sure he or she doesn't have a life-threatening condition like a blocked intestine. Number 8. Excessive Sleepiness if your child is taking extra naps or seems to hit the hay earlier than usual, chances are they're not getting enough sleep. Keep in mind that these kids need a lot of shut-eye. Infants need 14 to 15 hours. Toddlers need 12 to 14. Preschoolers require 11 to 13 hours. And school-aged children up to 10 need 10 or 11 hours. So, how do you know if excessive sleepiness is a sign of something serious? Sick toddlers and children will often sleep more than they usually would since rest helps the body heal. But you should be able to wake your child up if you try, and they should be able to answer questions or, if they're too young to do so, at least focus on you. If that's not the case or if you have an infant who is not waking up to be fed, you should call your doctor immediately to help determine what the cause might be. Number 9. Pain While Urinating if your little one is complaining of pain when they pee, chances are it's vulvitis, an inflammation of the vulva, most likely caused by bubble baths or harsh soaps. Another possible cause could be urinary tract infections or UTI. In fact, UTIs account for more than a million visits to pediatrician offices a year. The key is knowing how to detect one. For younger babies, they may seem irritable, feverish, or they might vomit or have trouble feeding. Older children might complain of discomfort while peeing, an increased urge to urinate, foul-smelling urine, and wetting their pants even after they've been potty trained. They also might have a fever. If you notice any of these symptoms, notify your doctor who can prescribe an antibiotic to treat the infection if that's the case. Also, try to prevent UTIs in the first place. Avoid giving your daughter bubble baths. Don't let her use strong soaps. Make sure she wipes front to back and check that her underwear isn't too tight. If your little boy is complaining of pain while urinating, a symptom much more common in girls, call the doctor. Number 10. Severe Tummy Pain Abdominal pains are common and usually are from an upset tummy, change of food, or constipation. But severe pain lasting more than a few hours could be appendicitis, especially if it's concentrated on the lower right-hand side. This sudden inflammation of the appendix can be life-threatening and missed in young children as they rarely get the telltale signs that adults suffer, such as fever, nausea, or vomiting. If your child is having prolonged tummy pains, get it checked as soon as possible. Are there any symptoms that you think we missed? Let us know in the comment section below! Enjoyed this video? Hit like, share, and subscribe to Bestie! Wait! What kind of Bestie would we be if we didn't tell you about our other awesome videos? Go ahead! Choose the left or right video and enjoy.